Welcome back to Manga Storian's Complete Story Series. Today we're going to be covering Berserk, chapter 147, 148, 149, and 150. When we last left off, Guts was still looking for Casca, but she was actually working with some of the prostitutes trying to flee the situation. Joe Kim had led Farney Center Knights to the entrance, telling them that this is it. This is where the cultists were. And that's when she saw individuals running out with half of their faces eaten, shouting for help. Suddenly, a group of possessed men run out of the shadows and they start eating into the knights that came with Farnese, as more and more crawl out. One lunges at Farnese and Azan thrusts his iron staff at him. The end of the staff slams into the possessed man's mouth, and then he flings him back into the crowd. Farnese asks, what is this? And Azan says that he's heard of pagans using various drugs during their rituals. Perhaps they can turn humans into some kind of beasts. Farnese thinks back to when she was attacked by the possessed dogs, and she thinks that this is the same as that night. But back in the cave, Ishii Ishidoro sees the knights moving in and then he spots one of the possessed men making his way towards Casca and Nina. Ishidoro then jumps down off of the ledge onto the heads of the men that are climbing up thinking, he's really gonna die here, isn't he? As he slams down on the possessed man next to Casca and Nina, he says that that was scary and he looks up and he plays it off. <laughs> the man looks back to get up and in a panic, Ishidoro grabs the nearest rock and he breaks it over the man's head. He tells the girls to hurry, they have to get out of there. But after seeing Nina naked, he blushes. He turns away, handing her his overcoat. As more soldiers flood into the cave, Ishidora looks around for an escape, and then he sees the shaman leading the goat men off to a secret passageway. The shaman tells the goat-headed man that they need to hurry, and he says that he's trying, his horns are stuck. But in the darkness of the passage, a pair of eyes looks at him, and then a spiked tentacle creeps out, shooting into the man's chest. As Ishidoro and the girls make their way up behind the group, the shaman starts to run back, and Ishidoro asks, where are they going? And then a hoof stomps on the ground. A few moments later, Ishidoro grabs Casca and Nina's hands, and then he runs them through the fight, and the two knights ask, what is this kid doing here? As they finish, a set of hooves stomp on their heads, and the now goat beast stares at everyone. The beast charges through the crowd, impaling people, and then it stops to scream. It runs Runs back, but as Farnese looks on, she sees this. This is the same as that other night. While the crowds all run out, Ishidora loses his grip on Casca's hand, and she trips, falling behind. As the possessed crowds close in on Casca, the goat beast pushes through and begins to lick Casca's chest. He then grabs her by the wrist, stating that they must meet. They must become family! The crowd surrounds the two of them, and the snake starts to crawl up into Casca's robes and out through the top. As the snake creeps into her mouth, there's a sudden rush of wind, and the beast lets go of Casca. There's a powerful force crashes down on it. Everyone watches as the beast pulls back a severed arm, and then everyone sees Guts. The possessed all make their way towards Guts, but they're all torn apart as Guts spins around like a whirlwind. Body parts fly amongst the cave, and Guts stops to look back at Casca. Overlooking at the fight, Farty stares, saying that, Why is he here? Guts tells Ishidora to take care of the girls, and Ishidora says that all he needs to do is just pay him back later. As the knights await their orders, some say that they should retreat, but Farnese holds out her sword, shouting that they are in combat! Those who surrender will be killed where they stand. Azan tries to tell her that they should, but Farnese shouts that they are the church's sword and shield, and they cannot be timid now. All soldiers advance! While the knights charge at the possessed men, Guts slashes through the oncoming group towards the passage. Farnese shouts to get that man, but Servigo pulls her back, stabbing at a man, telling her it's too late for her. But maybe, as Guts' groups presses on, he feels a presence of something, and he quickly blocks the hordes of the goat beast. The beast jumps back, huffing, stating, The witch is yours. Guts swings his sword and the beast jumps past, and then it jumps back up onto Guts, and then springs off onto the fire, and Guts calls out to Ishidora, To go! Take the girls and leave! I'm leaving Casca with you! The goat shouts to leave the witch, and Guts straps into the crossbow and begins cranking out bolts. They shoot through the cabin, and as a few hit, the goat beast crashes into the ledge and he falls back down. The goat crawls up, stating, I will kill you! And Guts loads in another rack of bolts, telling him, I really don't believe in fate. I can't leave Casca in here with such an evil place, and I won't ever leave her again. The goat beast screams, and it begins to run forward, and Guts unloads another rack of bolts. But the beast dodges all of them, and as he shifts side to side, the horns nearly pass by Guts' eye. He continues firing back as he passes, and as the beast stops, he says that one or two hits won't stomp him, and then he reaches into his pouch for a small object. He lights the fuse, and he begins to count down as the beast closes in. And then he tosses the explosive, shielding himself, and he feels the blood splatter against his sword. He looks, and he sees the bomb blew away part of the goat's face, and then he collapses. The goat tries to get back up, but Guts slams his sword down, cutting through the horns and tearing through the neck. The goat's head rolls away, and Guts looks at the explosive, saying, That's a really nice thing we have, but it's no time to relax. He heads up through the secret passageway to the outside of the mountain, and then he sees a shadow standing before him. Serpico tells him, I've been waiting. 
And without saying anything, Guts calmly fires his remaining bolts. Serpico jumps out of the way, telling him, wait a moment. And then he sees a small explosive bounce by his feet. The bomb goes off and Guts continues on and then a sword is thrust before his face. Serpico says, that was rather cruel. But Guts aims the crossbow down on the blade of the sword, swings, knocking Guts' hand off the lever. He reaches back for the sword, but Serpico thrusts, causing Guts to release. And as the sword is held at Guts' throat, Serpico tells him, I'm not going to let you use your sword. This is strategy, but with your size and location, the disadvantages are against you. Serpico then thrusts down, cutting at Guts' cheek, thinking that that man was hurtful towards her. He must disappear. Elsewhere, up ahead, Ishiduro finishes lowering Nina down from the ledge, and he starts to lower Kasuka. But as she lowered, a set of eyes watch. Back with Guts, Serpico tells him that the sun is in his eyes, the passage is too narrow, and he's wearing heavy armor. His right hand is on the side of the cliff, therefore, he has all of the advantages. Serpico's sword starts shooting by, pushing Guts back, and he begins to think that he can't even see this guy's movements. He doesn't have time to waste. Serpico suddenly stops and he asks if he's worried about the group up ahead, and if so, his comrades have already captured them. Seeing Guts visibly shaken, Serpico thrusts again, stating, I'm just kidding. I want to see you be impatient, because otherwise, you wouldn't be taking me seriously. The blade continues to graze parts of Guts' face and neck when suddenly the sword is stopped. Back with the girls, Nina checks on him ahead and she sees Joe Kim. She asks if it's really him and Joe Kim looks at her and screams! Ishidaro shouts, what's going on? Is someone there? Nina looks back at Joe Kim stating, you're alive. And Joe Kim runs out shouting that the pagans are this way! Ishidaro shouts for her to run. She's just going to be captured if she stays there. But as Casca hangs on the rope, she wiggles herself free and jumps down to where Nina is. Puck says the guards are coming, and Ishidaro quickly wraps himself up in the rope and he jumps down. But as the knights surround Nina and Casca, Farnese looks at Casca and says that that must be the woman that the Black Swordsman is trying to save. Back on the ledge, Serpico's eyes widen at the sudden stop of the sword, and he sees Guts holding the blade. Serpico tells him that all he has to do is twist and pull. Grabbing it was just reckless. Then he sees the fake arm pointed right at him, and Guts tells him, You have good reflexes and arm strength. It wasn't reckless. The fake arm shoots forward, punching through the blade, and Guts grabs onto the crossbow crank. Just as Guts starts to fire, Serpico falls to the ground, and he swings at Guts' backside. As Guts repositions, he sees Serpico toss a lit explosive, but it forces him to shield himself in the blast. When the smoke clears, Guts looks around as he Serpico has vanished. He tells himself, that guy has unbelievable skills and can use any type of weapon that's around him. He's difficult to deal with, like a fox. Back at the secret passage entrance, Serpico tells himself that he shouldn't have challenged him. Why did he do that? A short while later, Guts heads down to the ledge and he sees Ishidoro alone. He tells him he's sorry and Guts grabs him by the strings, ready to kill him. But let's go. He then hears the sounds of horses, and he looks down towards the river to see the knights leaving, with Casca and Nina in tow. That wraps up these chapters of the story of Berserk. I hope you guys are enjoying, and we'll be back next Friday with Berserk Fridays. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to keep up to date on what's happening, and you can follow us on Twitter at MangaStory, and I'll see you next time right here.